Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome to the 2024 State of the Office Report. Perhaps the last one. We will see. There's Willie, my co-programmer, taking a nap as usual. Let's go around the office. There have been some changes. Not to you. The North Face backpack will outlive us all. Please bury me in this backpack. Down there's my workstation. Uh, I went from a fractal refine adult workstation to a Fantech infinity mirror glass child's workstation. I don't know why I'm doing a Benjamin button on my case, but I did. But now it's not plugged in at all. And there's a story there. There used to be an Ikea 1IU rack space bookcase. I don't know why I think of these things in terms of rack spaces, but it used to be right there. It is now under the desk. It's against the wall. Put some little furniture feet on it to get it a couple inches off the ground so that desk legs can slide right under. Now all of my Wi-Fi router and cable modem and all my bits and bobs, you know, U UPS and all that stuff, it's all in the case. And I did not cable manage because it's against my religion, but all the cables are hidden. So you don't know. Maybe I did. I didn't, but maybe I did. That's all back there now. All the guitars are the same. I am getting a new guitar this year, uh, fairly soon. I think I know what I'm going to get. All these are the same. You may not have seen this one before because this is a Gibson bone breaker that usually sits in a case because it scares me. It was given to me. I would never pay this much money for a guitar under any circumstances. This is probably several thousand dollars worth of wood. Any of my regular guitars, if they fell down a flight of stairs, I'd be like, ah, it sucks, but it'd be okay. This thing scares me because it's very, it's, I am not worthy of this. Yeah, but I do play it sometimes and it sounds great. All right, bookshelf, who cares? Filing cabinet, no one cares. Trash can, less we care about that. Still got my rock and stock stool, although it's being occupied by the fur ball. And back to my desk. My piano is now on this sliding thing I, I, I put in. So it can get out of my way. And by phys being physically closer to me through osmosis, I should learn how to play it. That is my theory. I said last time I was at Endgame Mechanical Keyboards. I lied. I got two more of them. This is one of them. This is a Epo Maker c v 65 b 2 or something like that. It is an aluminum case keyboard. I regret buying that because now I don't think I can use anything else. This weighs as much as a newborn child. It's a great keyboard. I kept it pretty much stock. I did change out the keycaps. It comes with like these uh, old IBM looking dingy keys. So I put these on there. I also got a wormier Womie SK71, which is a very nice aluminum frame keyboard. It's getting really cheap now. I think this was a little over $100 and the other one was a little under $100 for an all aluminum case. That is crazy town, but I like it. Uh, for my uh, mobile devices, I don't know if I had this last year or not. This is a ThinkPad T480. I love it. I put in the Chongus extended battery on the back. Uh, ThinkPad T480 has an internal and an external removable battery. So removable battery is now the Chonga size. So this lasts 10 to 14 hours depending on what I'm doing. I love this. This is a Samsung tablet I use mostly for reading. And you're looking through a Samsung phone because I still have that. So that's all that. Uh, I do have my Headrush full range flat response speakers over there. What happened to the guitar pedal board? No one's asking. Well, I'll tell you. I'm not using any pedals right now. And that weirds me out a little bit because I have some great pedals. I actually got a really nice new one this year. It's a Strymon Cloudburst Reverb. Sounds great. I'm not using any of that anymore. I'm going straight into this Audient interface which I picked up used, and it's pretty nice. Into my computer, back to the audience, and into my flat 
full range flat response speakers essentially acting like studio monitors here and it just my guitar tones are better than may have ever been through this which isn't saying a lot i'm not a professional or anything but it sounds fantastic now how can it be going through a computer if it's over there apparently plugged into a house fan well because i got a new computer and I have some shame here, but hear me out. Pro audio on Linux is kind of tough. Audio on Linux has always been kind of tough. It's a lot better than it used to be. Pro audio is still really hard. You got latency issues and, and you know, weird popping issues and real-time kernels you can try. And none of the software that comes with your hardware you bought is made to work for Linux. Sometimes you can get it working perfectly fine with like Y bridge and and wine. Sometimes it works really bleh. sometimes it doesn't work at all. It's hard. You can do it, but it's hard. So during Prime Day, I thought I'm gonna get a, one of these little mini PCs for about 400 bucks and it's going to run wi Windows. Oh, I know Windows and it'll just be my audio thing. And I did that, and now I'm running a Neural DSP Archetype Rubia, which is a guitar plug-in. Ah, it just sounds so amazing and inspiring, and it, of course it's just made to work so it, in that environment, and it just works. So, I did that thinking I would like KVM switch between my Linux box for regular stuff and the Windows box little thing. Uh, but now I'm just running Windows 11. I know, wait, I know. I'm not happy about it either. I, after using Windows 11, I, I've been using Windows forever at work. Using Windows 11 on here, I, I think Linux is a better operating system. I think KDE is a better desktop. Uh, but when I got this little box, the issue is, is it's faster than my giant old machine. It's an AMD 7735. If you don't know about mini PCs, they're essentially laptops without screens or keyboards and little tiny boxes. They're mobile processors. 7735, which is like eight cores and 16 threads at a higher clock speed than my desktop, which was six cores, 12 threads. And it supports DDR5, so the RAM is faster. The only thing not as fast is the graphics. The integrated graphics on the 7735 is like AMD 680M, which is a hell of a lot slower than a dedicated GPU like my RX 6600 and the desktop. But I run at 1440p, and I can bounce the games down to 1080p using AMD's FSR upscaling, and I can't tell a difference, and it runs fine. So... And it sips power. It's like, ah. you know, I, it almost makes more sense to throw Windows on the giant tower and throw Linux on this because it's faster. Then I'm running two PCs and I'm drawing all that power and spending all this more heat in the office. And now I'm just running this little Windows 11 box full time and seeing if I can stand it. I've got the old guy over here. It's not in a closet yet because uh, Windows may just finally piss me off enough to go with two machines but right now it's just windows i know i know believe me i know and one thing about the mini pcs is they tend to be well they're like little laptops they then have little fans that can be whiny little turds so i did mod my mini pc i like ripped out the tiny little fan in it that was was a whiny little turd and you probably won't even be able to see this but it's that white box right there. And what I did is I have gravity mounted to the top. And gravity mounted just means I set, set it on top. Sounds better than just, I just laid it there like an idiot. But on top is a 140 millimeter case fan. That just blows down on the heat sink all the time. And now it's dead quiet and it's cooler than it was before. So... But it's window. I know, I know, it hurts me too. But it works pretty good. That's pretty much all the changes, except for one. 
I'm retiring. I'm retiring March 1st. And I hear what you're saying. I can hear you right now. You're saying you are way too young and handsome and virile to retire. And first of all, thank you for saying that. I do appreciate that. But I've been with the county. My service credits are at 30 years. I get a full retirement. The difference between retirement pay and not retirement pay is like less than minimum wage. So I'd actually be better off retiring and going working at McDonald's financially than I would be able, you know, keeping working for the government. Now, if the government was fully remote or still fully remote, I would probably just keep doing it anyway because I enjoy the work. But dragging myself into Charlotte three times a week is just especially for like less than minimum wages, it just doesn't make any sense. So I'm retiring and I have a lot of thoughts about that. It's super weird uh, because I'm not super old. I'll just tell you, I'm uh, not super old. <laughs> you thought I was going to tell you my age. Didn't you? But also, you know, leap year baby. So it, I, I don't count the same way the rest of you do. So it's, it's weird. It's kind of like I'm, living in like the 50s or 60s because it used to be if you're you're not from the u.s in the u.s it used to be you got a job you stayed in your job for like 30 years and you got a pension at that job and then you retired and uh played shuffleboard and got into conspiracy theories that used to be how it worked now there's really no pensions and you just kind of work till you drop and so the path I'm on right now is very anachronistic. Is that the right word? It's very akin to what you would do in yesteryear in America. In, in European countries, I, I think, and other places, it's still kind of that way. But it's like I'm kind of living in the past, the way I'm retiring right now. And I don't know what I'm going to do ne next. I My first plan is to do nothing. I have a lot of house projects I want to do, uh, some woodworking kind of stuff. I'm going to play around and who knows, that might take me three days and I'll, I'll be out looking for a job or something else to do. If I do some volunteer work, I, I just have no idea. But that's when I get a new guitar, it's going to be my retirement guitar. Because after that, I have a fixed income. I'll be clipping coupons. No, actually, I'll be, I'll be fine. But uh, yeah, that's a big event for me. So this might be the last State of the Office report. I don't know what I'm going to do with the YouTube channel. I don't know what I'm going to do with a lot of the open source projects I have. I'll probably just keep maintaining for a while because there's really not a lot of work there. It's a, they're pretty much feature complete. It's more just keeping up with the dependencies and things. Beyond that, I don't know. People keep asking me, what are you going to do? I don't know. Uh, I'm not driving to Charlotte, that's for sure. Anyway, that's the State of the Office report. I hope everybody's doing well and happy, and they're going to have a great year. And I appreciate every one of you for hanging out with me from time to time. And I will catch you later. Bye-bye.